thank you, Dr. Mudd. I've had several occasions to read introductions to various members of the Hall of Fame, but I've never had the honor to induct one that has the credentials that this young man has. <clears throat> Mike got better every year. He was better for, as a freshman. He was better as a sophomore. He was outstanding as a junior. Before his junior year, he, was not, he wasn't even a blimp on a radar screen as far as professional baseball. We went down and played the University of Texas. Mike lost two to one, pitched an, out, an outstanding game, and my phone never quit ringing from then on. <clears throat> In fact, it got so bad that Jane, every Monday, I'd have to put a piece of paper on the refrigerator when Mike was gonna pitch, when he was gonna throw a bullpen, and when he, when he was gonna pitch last. So when the scouts called, if I wasn't there, she could handle it. <laughs> couple of stories about Mike. You always gotta tell a few stories before you uh, get, into, get the big show. First thing I remember about Mike, we're down, <coughs> down in San Antonio. Uh, we're playing in a championship game, uh, no, semifinal game. Had to win the game. We're up one run. They got their number nine hole hitter up, bottom of the ninth, runner on first. This guy's hitting ninth, not because he's going to play in the big leagues, I promise you that. He's, he's an out. Mike throws two fastballs by him, boom, boom. Man, I'm feeling good. Well, Mike decides to pick the guy off at first. Well, by the time the ball picked, uh, the right fielder picked the ball up in the right field corner, this guy was rounding third. <laughs> and they probably should have sent him, but they stopped him, thank God. I immediately went to the mound, and Mike and I had a conversation. Uh, that's, that's not right. I talked, and Mike listened. <laughs> and uh, I told him that that was sure as hell wasn't the proper time to try to pick the guy first. So he uh, struck the next guy out, and we went home happy. The next, next day also involved a playoff game. Two out of three, we lost, the, we lost the first game. We had to win the second game. Mike? Won the second game for us. So we're up one and one. That's good. So, you know, Mike's pitched. He's done his day's work. Dirty, sweaty, everything. Mike, go take your shower going in. Okay. So he goes on in and gets ready. Comes out to watch the, <clears throat> the third and final game. Well, it was, it was a game that was going back and forth. Nobody had any pitching. It was awful. Uh, I was mad early. <laughs> uh, Stayed mad most of the afternoon and about the seventh or eighth inning the umpire said, since you're so tired and sick, I suggest you go sit up by the gym the rest of the afternoon. So uh, off, I, off I went. And a couple of innings later, my assistant coach came up and joined me. Uh, we, turned the, we turned the team over to Tommy Collins. He was, the only, he was the only senior out there. So he was running the team and like I say, the game's going back and forth, back and forth. We're getting late in, and finally, we get a um, get close to him in the eighth. Finally, we get a get a lead in the eighth, and all of a sudden, I see Mike running out of the stands. I said, well, "You know, this is not a time to leave, Mike. We we may got a chance to win." Well, here he comes back five minutes later. He got his uniform on. He goes in, strikes out three guys in the ninth inning. We go home. <laughs> that was great coaching, Tommy Collins, because I'd have never done that. <clears throat> Mike learned an important lesson in pro ball very early. Mike, made, Mike hit a guy with a pitch and went over and told the guy he was sorry. His manager couldn't get out there fast enough. He said, Mike, you're making $650 a month and I'm just taking 150 of it from you. Mike never apologized again for hitting a guy. Mike is the only non-Yankee that has owned four World Series rings. That is, that's big time stuff, folks, I'll tell you. Some things that, that really amazes me about Mike's career. In 2005, a, a major league season consists of 162 games. He pitched in 81 games that year for the Boston Red Sox. He pitched in half the games. When he retired in 2008, he was second oldest player. Still playing active player, that's pretty good. 207, he won, won the Lou Gehrig Award for his uh, contribution on and off the field. 
but on the Lou Gehrig Award from uh, Major League Baseball, which is really an outstanding award. I read on one of Mike's blogs that someone had sent out. I thought about it summed up Mike's career. It said Mike Timlin would take the ball any day, any time, anywhere, any inning, and get you some crucial outs. And that's how he survived for 18 years in the big leagues. You got to remember that those guys standing up at the bat were making a lot of money too. They were good too, but he, he, able, he was able to defeat them. I'm going to read the official citation now. Mike A. Timlin. Mike came out of Midland, Texas as a solid outfielder. When Jim, uh, when Jim Mallon recruited him to pitch for Southwestern Pirates during the summer of 1984, Mike went on to pitch three years for the Pirates from 1985 to 1987 before being drafted to play professionally. As the eighth pitcher of the Pirates, he appeared in 51 games, threw a no-hitter his final season, and holds a school record of 11 complete games in 1987. His most productive year on the mound, however, were to come into Major League Baseball, where he had an 18-year career from 1981 to uh, 208. Mike, I got to ask you this. I'm going to interrupt you. You're in the big leagues 18 years, right? How come you never got a hit? <laughs> He's 0 for 7. <clears throat> Did you ever foul one? Yeah. Did you ever get to first base? No. Okay. <laughs> Only to take a right turn. Oh, so, well, at least you hit it. Well, anyway... You weren't, paid, you weren't paid to hit, you were paid to pitch. Drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in 87, his outstanding career was highlighted by the earning of four World Series championship rings, two with, ball, two with the Toronto Blue Jays in 1992 and 1993, two with the Boston Red Sox in 204 and 207. His first World Series championship in 92 was truly memorable. He was called up on to get the final out for the Blue Jays in game six against Atlanta. Braves to win the World Series. He concluded his career having pitched in 1,058 games and became the number one in Major League Baseball in relief appearances by a right-handed reliever when he made, it, made his 1,054 appearance. The Boston Red Sox, in recognition of his six-year career with the organization, declared April 19, 2009 as Mike Timlin Day at Fenway Park. They had him throw out the first pitch. In 2007, he joined the list of Major League Baseball's Who's Who's when he was awarded the prestigious Lou Garrett Memorial Award given to players who best emphasize Lou Garrett's character and integrity both on and off the field. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to formally welcome Mike Timlin into the SU Hall of Fame. So proud of him. So proud of him. When I was talking with Mike, he said he's not fond of public speaking, and I said you can make it as short or long as you want. So it's either going to be a thank you or we'll be here till midnight, right? <laughs> Might be closer to midnight. <clears throat> oh, this is going to slide down. I'm just going to, it's like my homework. <laughs> wow, it kind of actually sounds like I did a lot. Doesn't seem like it's, uh, that I did that much around here, but uh, I did enjoy, uh, <clears throat> well, Coach, we, we kind of laughed every once in a while when you got kicked out. So, <clears throat> And I, I was I was proud of Tommy for bringing me back in because uh, I think I was chewing his ears like, dude, I, I can pitch, I can pitch, I can pitch. Finally, he's like, dude, fine, go get your uniform on. So <clears throat> that was, that was kind of it. But uh, I'm not a real big you know, public speaker, so I'm going to read this <clears throat> because – you know, I'm not in the Hall of Honor, and I didn't have a whole lot of, you know, scholastic things. <laughs> so I got to read mine. <clears throat> so first of all, I'd like to I'd like to thank God not only for giving me the talent to play the game of baseball, but the drive to succeed in the game itself. There are many people here tonight that I'd like to, you know, just give a thank you to, if I haven't done so already. First of all, would be my wife Dawn. She's <clears throat> She's endured the most during my career, from late night bus rides to early morning kids getting up off a road trip. She's been a school teacher. She's led the kids around many, many cities in this United States. Probably the best tour guide we've ever known. I love you, and I thank you. My kids, Jake and Michaela, you guys have missed a lot of school. 
a lot of activities that other kids got to do and, you know, following me around. So I hope while we travel this country, you know, some of those memories will stick with you. So thank you for that. I'd also like to thank some members of my family that are here also. My sister Jerry Lynn is not here, but Tracy and Sherry, <coughs> who put up with a lot of things a young boy would do to his sisters. <coughs> you guys taught me a lot of, about life and love and respect. Thanks for all you've done to keep me in and out of trouble. Next, I'd like to uh, address my aunts and uncles. Without y'all, I'd probably not have made it in this school at all. C.W. and Janice Anderson. <laughs> you guys helped me get a try out here at SU just by knowing Dave Sanders, who passed away a few years ago. Dave Sanders knew Coach Mallon, so otherwise without that connection, this young man had to, wouldn't have had a chance. So thank you very much for that. Julian Nick Bashara. Well, you know, this Nick's not here, so I can kind of pass that. But um, <laughs> Julie probably saved my backside a couple of times. <clears throat> she lived uh, closer to downtown Austin, so when uh, a few baseball players spent a little too much time on 6th Street, <clears throat> she had an open bed and a couch, and <clears throat> we had to call her to come get us at a Burger King one time. <clears throat> I'm not going to name any names, but I was one of them. Um, I can't forget the guys with I, you know, who I was on the field with. These guys not only hung, hung with me throughout college, but also as my career took off into the pro level. Eric Fox, Danny Cohen, Mike Cavers, Jeff Giusti, Patro, TC. I really do appreciate you guys educating me and showing me how to play this game correctly. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Last but not least <clears throat> is my mom, who passed away several years ago, ironically, from Lou Gehrig's disease. She gave me so many opportunities to play this game. She never pushed me to play. She just wanted me to have fun playing. She was always there to listen to me and let me tell her how bad things were and even how good things were. <clears throat> she taught me how to play fair and mostly just with her lifestyle never to give up this is how I made it where I am today from, from her strength to the love of my family I thank you for putting, <clears throat> putting me in the Southwestern Hall of Fame I know it's my name on the wall but I also know that it's my family up there also now speaking of moms <clears throat> there's one there is but one that almost every athlete at Southwestern knew loved and hated <laughs> only because she told the truth the famous Shirley Miller <clears throat> I want to thank you for keeping me straight and for giving me the courage to work through school. Coach Mallon, I want to <clears throat> congratulate you on this achievement in your baseball career also. You've probably been up for sainthood, really, with some of the players that passed under you. I'm sure you'll settle for this honor. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, listening to Mr. Sanders and giving me a shot to play college baseball. You're a good man, damn hard coach, but that's what made you great. Thank you very much.